Well, and thank you for tuning into Stampscaping 101. This is a sunset-ish scene that I just stamped out and colored and finished off, which looks not too much unlike many of the scenes that I've done using the same uh, imagery and similar color schemes and color application. But one of the things that I did that was different in this scene is something that's very subtle. If you have uh, the scene in just, I don't know, regular non <laughs> direct lighting on it, but if you have direct lighting on it and you turn it at a certain angle, watching this water here. Okay. Do you see that in there? All those little kind of streaks in there. That has been created with the use of some of the different pens from my gigantic gel pen set here. I've kind of zoomed in this scene so far uh, just to show people some of the uh, the process of adding the uh, colors in here, but these pens here are all kind of laid out in different pastels and metallics and glitter, so I think this was the row of glitter pens right here that I used. See these pens right here? Now like one color or something like that. I have 180 colors and I mean this entire range here right from right here to here. I didn't use all of them in the scene. Um, but let me get this out of the way here but see all of these colors right here are similar to the color scheme used in the scene right? So now I can utilize I don't know a range I could choose from, I don't know, 15 different colors to add these types of effects like this. Before I was working mostly with like a white gel pen, right? And now I have, you know, orange glitter, orange metallic, pale orange, very pale orange uh, glitter or metallic pens to choose from, and I could add those types of things, like in these water ripples down here, I used uh, the shimmering uh, image, just kind of as a head start to kind of create this idea of shimmering water, but see something like this, sometimes I don't want something to stand out too obvious, but you know, like I said, but when you hold this up to the light, you know, in a certain angle, or maybe your viewer does, or your recipient of your card if you've given it away, then all these little things like this, you know, these little marks that I've kind of added in here really come to life. See that right there? But without that lighting on it, okay, it just kind of blends in beautifully with the background. So that little touch right there is something that's kind of more subtle. I mean, you can do that for things like little golden stars or something like that, or silver stars, or, you know, kind of a, a comet um, tail or something like that, shooting across a, you know, night sky in silver, or silver glitter, or dark blue glitter, or something like that, so um, it's not one or the other, but just a matter of, um, I don't know, using whatever you want in combination with one another in accordance with maybe your color scheme, in this case a sunset, you know, using those warm tones in there. And I also use some of the white as well, you know, for the stronger little highlights, but now those um, white gel pen marks maybe become kind of uh, utilized less because I have this whole, you know, selection of pens to go with now that I can use for some, maybe some more subtle marks. So it's kind of, you know, doing something different, but also kind of, it, it can be used to kind of refine kind of an existing um, method or technique that I already do. So anyway, uh, a lot more experiments to come with my new gel pens. And I really love using gel pens as you've seen in so many of the videos for various uh, 
types of marks, like, such as highlights or specular light on a water surface. So, anyway, if you watch this video, I hope you enjoy it, and thanks as always for tuning in. Okay, let's see if we can do a scene kind of in some golden tones to make use of some different colored gel pens in various values within a given hue or a given temperature range. I have a lot of pens to choose from, of course. If you've seen any of the uh, latest couple videos, there's gold, actual me the metallics in here, and um, I don't know, a various range of uh, values within kind of a golden uh, color scheme in glitter pens or just in the regular, I guess these ones are neon maybe. And I don't know, everything's kind of all arranged in, I don't know, I should get this organized one of these days, but um, uh, I have a lot to choose from, so <clears throat> I think I've been using this, these pens so far in kind of a conservative manner and uh, in the spirit of kind of exploration you know you have to kind of be willing to <laughs> do some experimentation um, or in the name of experimentation you know be willing to come up with some potentially really ugly looking you know final pieces by simply going overboard with the uh, with the media so I don't know, sometimes you have to kind of, I don't know, do something a little bit underwhelming in terms of uh, the utilization of a given, me you know, uh, medium just to, I don't know, kind of get the feel of it a little bit. But once in a while you have to kind of go overboard. I don't know if that's going to be the case here, but uh, potentially overboard because if you don't go overboard with something then you never really know you know you don't have a good feel of the uh, kind of how far you can take something you're always kind of you know putting on the brakes and I don't know maybe in this case a scene might never realize its full potential you know from never having got there and then go you know gone over you know so We'll see where this scene gets to, but I am willing to <laughs> sacrifice a scene, potentially, by just taking it too far. I don't know. We'll see how it gets to. I'm going to do this one kind of in a somewhat of a sunset-ish colored scheme. So I'm going with some browns here. Kind of some golden hue, maybe. And we'll see where this gets to. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to stamp this a little bit off center. Let's go this way. I'll tell you what, I'll go a little bit higher in the composition too because I really want to focus in on some kind of shimmering water with some uh, specular light kind of flashing off the surface amongst, uh, you know, some other kind of, uh, I don't know, almost uh, glittery, metallic looking surface. Sometimes you look up in the sky and it looks like, you know, if it's a sunset, kind of a molten um, red glowing um, color scheme. All right, this is a dark brown here. And let me pause here. I, I think I want to go for a little bit more depth with the use of some larger trees here. So I need to go get the Pines and Rocks stamp. This one was the Lakeside Cove Large. Okay, this is the Lakeside Cove Large. This is the Pines and Rocks stamp. You can see how these can be used together. You can go on this side of the uh, cove or on this side. Usually I snip it a little bit lower to represent something closer to me in terms of perspective. And I'll stamp this one out in the same number 18 dark brown from Marvy.
I go about like so. This is going to be overlapping this part of the uh, lake. So probably overlapping a good, I don't know, maybe half inch. So you don't have to be perfect in terms of your placement. Don't try to just match up edge to edge. That's not what these stamps are about. They're about, you know, really generous um, tolerance in terms of your overlapping. Usually you want to overlap a little bit too much rather than too little because then you'll have spaces in between things. So, you know, don't worry about it. I don't know if I would overlap three inches into it. That might be going too far, but, you know, quarter inch to three quarters inch, something like that is good. If you're using acrylic blocks, maybe it's even easier, but it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> okay, now if I wanted to, I can even use these trees. In here is foreground. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I won't. We'll see where this kind of goes. All right, this stamp right here is called Shimmering. And I thought I would add this into the scene. You don't have to. You can also use, um, let's see, I don't have it here on my desk, but there's a water pattern stamp that would look really good in here. If you do that, I'd recommend doing it in various shades of brown or something of that sort. The colors of the sky are going to be this rich, um, kind of warm, earthy looking brown to gold color scheme. So that being said, when you just start to do the reflections down here, you know, anywhere where you see kind of these darker lines, that would represent kind of folds in the water surface, right? So if you have kind of golden sunset, you know, uh, colors in the sky, then you'll want to go with some colors of that color scheme in the reflections down here. I'm saying that because sometimes people think, okay, water is blue, trees are green, whatever, right? But if you look at nighttime with a cool blue moon, you know what I mean? It's not going to be, you know, trees aren't going to look green, they're going to look black. And reds don't look you know, red under a moonlight, so on and so forth. Water tends to be like a mirror, so it reflects the colors going on in the sky. So I'm going to do this color accordingly. Not that you can't do something kind of a little bit more surreal, but I am going to do stick with the um, color scheme. There's no right, you know, up or down on this, but sometimes I look at this and, I don't know, it occurs to me I might want to do it one way or another. I might want to go for a little bit of variation in here, so I'm going to put some streaks in here and take off some of that ink in a couple areas just to go for a slightly varied impression here. We're going to be using a lot of different colors and streaks of color in here too, so this is just kind of getting you started like this, okay? You don't have to do really anything on here. You can just stamp it one way, but I like to go for a little bit more of a varied surface, so sometimes I do something like that. Okay. I could add some more texture out here. Maybe I will. Um, I tell you what, maybe I'll go for a little bit of a lighter texture, so I'll go with a, a brown here. This is the number six if you're using something like a Distress Ink. You know, like a... Oh... Um, like a walnut or something like that would be the equivalent of this brown. It's kind of a, a warm, medium tone brown, I would say. Okay. So we're just kind of filling this in here, like so. And let's go for a sun in here. This is called... Um, hot sun. If I stamped this out in a blue or something like that and used it in a night sky, it could easily be a full moon too. So things like this type of image, you can really do it and use it for whatever purpose you want. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stamp this out in a brown. Now some people think of you know like just like water um, being blue. Some people think of the, you know, the sun as being yellow. All right, so if you stamp this out in yellow, one of the things about it 
is you certainly could do that, but if you blend in some colors over the top of it, like say a yellow or brown or something like that, if it's stamped out in such a light color, a light value of something like a yellow, all right, by the time you blend some colors over it, that image isn't really going to hold up and it'll start to disappear because it's stamped out so light. So I generally for sky figures, not that you can't do lighter tones like a pale blue cloud, but with things like this, if you're, if you're going to add more colors over the top of it, I'd recommend at least a medium tone um, value of whatever color scheme you're working in. But again, you know, that's not a rule or anything like that, but that's what I tend to do. Okay, I'm just going to mask off some of these rocks. I'm going to have this um, sun a little bit lower on the horizon, maybe peeking from behind some of these trees like that. I'll place it like right there. <clears throat> like something like that. Okay. And that will be my light source. So that being said, I'll try not to tone it out too much with um, the colors that I'm about to blend into the scene. Okay, so let's see if I have a clean stylus tool here. These stylus tools get pretty stained, you know, when you start to use a lot of ink on them and use a lot of dark inks, but just because it's kind of stained like that, it doesn't mean that it will come off onto your scene. This one has a little bit of blue. Let me see if I color this one is. This one looks like I used brown in it the last time, so I'll use that side. Okay, let's, you know, just for the sake of uh, mixing up my uh, brands of inks here, I stamped this out in Marvy so far, the number 18 dark brown and then the uh, number 6 brown up here, but let's just use a Distress Ink, Tim Holtz's Yellows Mustard Seed, kind of a little bit more of an aged looking yellow than, you know, I would say most inks out there. Ranger inks blend very nicely and spread across the paper. Now, Again, I like to go for a little bit of variation in here, so see how I'm kind of adding these streaks in here? Like that, and not just toning the whole thing in, all right? Where you add those streaks, I mean, there's no right or wrong, okay? But it just means to kind of create a little bit of a variation over the surface here. Now this is real. Uh, the pad seems really juicy, so it's really spreading very, very easy across this glossy cardstock. I like to add a little bit more shadows down here in the rocks. So now this is a very light color that I'm working with so far, but I can start to establish kind of some areas where they'll be light and dark, meaning lighting and shade within the scene, okay? And I want it a little bit streaky too. I want that variation in there because I want it really give those um, gel pens, I don't know, a run for their money, see how far I can kind of take that, um, uh, I don't know, color transition idea with them. All right, I'm gonna work through some tones like these right here. Kind of an ochre, orange, brown right here. Tell you what, let's mix in a little bit of a, shall we go with the red? Let's go with the red in here too. All right, so it'll be something like this. Doesn't have to be Marvy pads, okay? If you have an orange of a different brand, a uh, red, those are two, you know, colors that are in most of our uh, our supplies, right? And I don't know. I think most of us have some kind of brown. And I just lay these out from light to dark, okay? If you can't tell which one's lighter or darker than the other, then it doesn't really matter. 
Okay, you can go with either one. I like to go in this order of light to dark so I don't have to clean off my tip in between applications, but it also helps in the blending process to um, just kind of work your way up the kind of the value scale starting from light to dark. Okay. Now if there are some areas in here that I kept light, uh, for the most part I'm going to stick with that scheme. Okay. In other words, when I move up into my darker tones, don't just tone everything out if you want some variation down here, you know, a few little streaks of that, that light in there, then just don't touch them. So I'm going to work around these, okay, like that, and retain those areas of light, okay? And that's kind of what was established with the um, shimmering design right here, okay? You can see how it's streaky in the design itself, so I'm staying with that idea of a streak. What it looks like is like that. That's what I'm doing on top of this paper like that. Okay, see that? I'm coming from this way and I'll turn it around to come from the other direction like that. And see how I turn my card? And I'll do the same up in the uh, sky too, okay? So variation is good. Tonal variation. And that's what's going to establish this idea of lighting within a scene. You don't really have lighting without shade, but if the shade just kind of overtakes everything, then you've lost your light as well, okay? So you don't have that contrast. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm kind of coloring some of these rocks. You can see where the shadows are in these rocks, right? It's at the base of all these rocks. Okay, and the tops of the rocks are lighter, just like on here. You can see the base of the rocks are darker, tops of them are lighter. I'm doing the same thing with the color here, you know, not perfectly, because it doesn't have to be, but see, I'm kind of holding this at an angle and coloring a lot of these rocks. All right, now I'm still with a fairly light tone, but I'm going to be doing this right through the value scale that I have chosen, so doing it with the light ochre. Well, it's not called light ochre, it's just called ochre. All right, let's try with the orange. This is just a number seven basic orange, okay? If you, your orange is a little bit more red orange or pale orange or something like that, uh, go ahead and use it. It doesn't have to be the same exact hue as I'm using. You know, this isn't some kind of formula. I just kind of grabbed whatever's on my desk here. Yes, I do know my colors here, you know, pretty well. But if I didn't have them, I wouldn't miss them, okay? I would just use, I mean, it. If I only had two colors to you you know use here, I might miss it. But uh, but if I didn't have this orange, I would just move on. Maybe I'd use a pink in here instead, you know, because a uh, pink and yellow kind of mix to form an orange. So you can use a pink as well instead of an orange, or you can use both. Let's do that. Okay, this is an orange, right? <clears throat> Let's see, um, let me just go for my basic pink right here. This is the number nine pink from Marvy. Let me just take some of this orange off so you can see, okay. Going on with the pink. Pink over the yellow just looks like a different color orange, right? This is just the orange straight out of the pad. This is pink, okay? But transparent colors, the beautiful thing about dye-based inks and this kind of process right here is that you can really mix and match and really get a lot of mileage out of your existing um, inks because if you know some of the basics about color blending such as red and yellow make orange well, in this case, pink is kind of a lighter version of red, right? 
then you can you can achieve a variation of orange with those two colors okay so you don't have to have them or you can use them both and maybe get different shades of orange you know can, you know being uh, created by the pink over the top of them and we always tend to use you know different amounts every time so there's so much variation that can take place and that's always a good thing you know now if you happen to try and just replicate perfectly something that you've done before and you don't remember the exact amounts that can be a little bit of a challenge but I don't know I probably realize that I can't just duplicate things perfectly early on so I don't even try these days and I don't know I've embraced that idea of variation okay all right adding some more in those shadows right here at the base of the rocks now this is certainly turning a certain type of uh, color scheme right now right but I still have these colors to go here so um, remember at any given point in the process I mean you might like it the whole way through to me this these colors right here they're a little bit um, too candy colored which would be okay but that's not really the feeling I'm going for in this scene so I just know that um, you know it's going to change incrementally as I go to my next color and keep building on to this so um, if you don't like something in terms of this type of process um, after two colors or one color even or something like that just remember you you know you have other colors to come what you're doing is you're you have to kind of get used to looking at um, and kind of understanding the uh, you know the role of a kind of a foundation I mean this is you know I'm starting to get into some darker tones right here but I do still feel that this is somewhat of a foundation for some other colors to come and a different look that I'm about to achieve okay especially going back to the color that I stamped out my images in so if I stamped them out of black I usually end my color um, layering process with that darker tone if it's black it's black in this case it's dark brown so anyway alright this is the lighter brown tone the number six brown that I use to stamp out some of this imagery including the Sun alright so this is where things start to come together it's when you start using when you start layering the colors that you stamped out your images in okay I feel that it's at that point in time things tend to kind of gel a little bit more really in any color scheme but um, you know certainly in this brown one too now remember this brown I'm using uh, has there's other colors in this tip still but also the page is fairly wet and maybe some of this ink isn't transferring onto the paper so quickly because as I do this I'm kind of streaking off you know some of the colors that I'm also trying to layer on there but that's not a problem though that just makes the uh, scene come out that much more smooth in terms of the application of colors All right and if you want them to apply quicker darker right then you can heat set it a little bit or something or you can just let this sit for five minutes if you want okay now this is the dark brown now watch this surface here okay here's the surface right here see how that is a big blotch <laughs> but see if by putting by layering down all those colors underneath it it really allows me to you know um, blend it out 
So that's what you generally want, all right? You want the ability to blend the darker tones on in a nice graceful manner. You don't want to, at this point in time, you don't want to have a bunch of shapes like that, you know, in the middle of your scene. If you do get something like that, you can kind of smooth it out, but um, um, you want that kind of moist surface, especially with the darker tones, because the darker tones, right, can leave a much more heavy mark. Now, I don't want to use that type of application of it. I'm going for something like this, right? See that? It's a nice smooth streak right there. And that's what I'm putting on here. But that's just to say that if you do get a mark that you don't like, if you've applied enough of the lighter tones, then you can go back in and you should be able to smooth that mark out, you know, be it a stylus tool tip or something like that, or something else. <clears throat> All right. By the way, as I make this video, um, my nose is a little bit clogged from some allergy or something. So I might sound funny in this video. Not that I don't always sound kind of weird, but uh, especially so here. Okay. Like I said, for me, this scene is coming together more now. You see how kind of that mellow, kind of uh, smoky look looks? It's because I'm using the same dark brown that I stamped out my imagery in, so using this on here is the thing that kind of blends everything together and brings everything together a little bit more so, okay? It's that same hue within the images. If it was black, if I stamped them out in black, then I would have to go to black, okay? But this, I don't know, it just, it brings things together and it starts to define things a little bit more. I like my four corners, not always, sometimes it's two corners, but for the most part, I like to go with my four corners a little bit darker. It's a nice framing device, visual framing kind of device, like a vignette. All right. See, I'm kind of working one little area at a time. I'm not going like this, you know, like that, okay? I stay in one area so that I can kind of blend that out a little bit and work it so the transition from dark to light is nice and smooth, okay? It's not working like this, like around like this, okay? It's working one little area at a time, okay? And then I move on to my next area, like that, okay? I'm hitting the shadows a little bit more around that lakeside cove. I feel it anchors it down and kind of gives it a opacity and visual weight. You see that? Where I've hit it in the shadows down here and along the water's edge. Shadows can really be a very effective tool, visual tool in your I don't know, scenic stamping repertoire, okay? It gives weight to your images and opacity and it kind of defines lighting within a scene. This is kind of setting up nicely for some uh, gel pen work, I would say. It's one of those things, I, I kind of like the scene as it is, but <laughs> that wasn't really the purpose of this scene. Okay, now let's see. Let's take a look at some different colors. Okay, so colors within this given color scheme in terms of some pens I'm going to try and match some tones out of here 
I look at this, this looks more purple than the uh, this little cap here. Yeah, it does. I think they've mismatched that. Let me see something. It looks purplish. I don't know. Magenta could look good in there too. Okay, this is some kind of metallic red. I can use some of that, I think. For down in here. And maybe... I'm looking at this, I'm kind of wanting to keep these in order. I, I have a feeling these, like this is metallic here. These are all the metallics. It does look like it's actually in, when I look at these just by row, I think they are by color scheme. All right, let me just try one of these metallics here. Or, no, the, I'm not metallics, this is a glitter. There's a little bit of a glitter barrel on here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but. All right, let's try some of this in here. <clears throat> I have a feeling that is the viewer of this video. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not. Let me try to get as close in as I can, and I'll really try to keep the uh, the working area in the frame of the uh, camera here. I should put this big post-it note right in front of my face. I have the, the cameras right in front of my face now, kind of, so sometimes it gets a little hard to work, but for the sake of the viewers here, <laughs> okay, what I'm doing right here is I'm just kind of reiterating some of the, uh, the lines in here. Gosh, I can't even tell. Yeah, it is applying. But when I apply it over an area with the same hue, or value especially, value, um, it's really hard to tell if it's going on or not. But it is going on beautifully. You know, on this uh, glossy cardstock with this gel, there's, you know, it could be uh, kind of a situ create a situation where um, the surface is too slick and it's not accepting the ink, but this ink is pretty uh, soft, I would say, so it's really gliding on the scene really nicely. It's applying, which I wasn't sure of, but no problem, okay? That's gone in and added some more lines to that. All right. Oh, there we go. See that? You can really see where it, I've added that. You go like that, and there's nothing, right? And that's what it's all about. So this is what I think is really fun about something like this. Let me see if I can catch that light again. See, you can really see that there. So that those types of things like that, you know, when the viewer is holding up a card, you know, you give this someone a card, or, or we can just enjoy that as our, for ourselves as the uh, creator of the scene, but it's that kind of little detail um, that just adds that extra touch, you know, it's that extra detail that you know, can keep really potentially keep the viewer's attention, you know. You want to kind of, you know, you want to kind of, I don't know, I guess you want to kind of dazzle your viewer just like a sunset would or something like that, you know, with the certain types of little effects within a scene. This is kind of, you know, when you look at it from a distance, you know, kind of, you know, you want to go for kind of a, well, I mean, different scenes have different emotional qualities to them, but you want to go for kind of a, like an ah moment, okay? And that's fine and all, but then if someone's enjoying your card that you give it to and they start to kind of really look at it, or some little thing of, you know, glitter kind of capture, you know, captures the light just right, it's that extra little touch that, you know, can really 
add to the experience, you know, the viewing experience for whoever's looking at it. Okay, now this is a lighter orange, so I'm adding some of that, maybe in some of the lighter areas, I don't know. These videos like this, you know, they they might be instructional. I hope they are in some ways, but um, you know, when I'm doing these experiments, it's not, you know, to demonstrate, you know, the usage of, you know, the glitter pen on water or something like that. I'm just, I'm kind of playing around here, and I don't know what to do, you know, or what this is going to look like, or I really don't know. Um, how to use this yet. So, this is just kind of going on of, you know, what I do uh, when I'm experimenting with something and kind of explaining the thought process. I, I guess the big part is, um, you know, just get in there and play around with something and something may or may not reveal itself. Some, sometimes you learn kind of what not to do as much as you learn what to do. You know, what looks not so good. Now, as I'm doing this on this scene, you know, this orange here, it is really hard for me to tell what's going on. I, you know, sometimes as I'm doing this, I'm kind of wondering if there's any ink coming out of this at all, because the hue that I'm going with isn't too much different than the color underneath it on the paper. So, you know, as I hold this up, okay, it looks like that, but as it captures the light, do I see anything? See that? You can see where it, it's going across that paper, that kind of glittery. You can really see it right there, right? Right in here. It's also over here, but this is a much lighter area, so it's more subtle, I'd say. Okay. Now there's also, um, well, here, let me just keep going on with this. Um, here's a yellow here, or actually this looks like gold glitter. It does, I can't even really see it as gold very much, you know, as I do this. I, you know, and as I kind of hold this paper up the light, that little scribble does shimmer a little bit, so. Uh, add some of this into the lighter area again, or I can add it into the darker area too. But uh, that is really some kind of fun stuff to play around with. There's gold in them, there are hills. See that? Need a few little streaks up here as well, I would say. Alright. I do see that quite well now. Alright, that looks... Pretty good. I'll try to hold it, I'll try to... Hold it in the light so you can see what's going on here. If you can't, here, let me try to get in here a little bit more. I'm getting more comfortable with that, with this pen and these marks as I go. If it's not apparent. Okay, let's see if I can get this to show. Alright, 
see those little glittery, glisteny areas here? See that? You can't see it at all like that, right? It's because when it captures the light, you know, then it really starts to shimmer like that. See, there's a certain angle when it just starts to, you know, it depends where your lighting, of course, is, but see that? And the camera doesn't show, really, it looks like it's just glare, but um, in person here, I can see all the different, the variations of color down here. <clears throat> Which is really the thing that I'm going for. All right. All right, this is, what is that? It's like a, I was gonna say bronze, but I don't know. <laughs> I'll put some on some of these rocks. It's kind of a dark, so it doesn't look like a highlight, but, um, just throw some of this, you know, this kind of iridescent color over some of these rocks so that maybe some of the rocks are slightly shimmery. Yeah, it's kind of bizarre having uh, all of these choices of colors. <laughs> this one is really a subtle variation of that uh, gold one that I used. Uh, Pens ago. All right. Okay, so I think I did retain a little bit of that white up there, right? So in doing so, I've afforded myself the ability to add. This is their white right here. Um, these pens are from shuttle art, as in like the space shuttle or something like that. But their pen, I did a little bit experiment um, when I did an unboxing video, and I found this white to be a little bit more translucent, okay, not quite so opaque as the my favorite gel pen which is the uniball signo pen um, in terms of a series those ones are really fantastic but anyways the, these are a little bit more translucent but i have zero complaints when it comes to these this pack of pens here this pack of pens is an unbelievable uh, grouping of pens to utilize in uh, really anything, but for me, in terms of scenes like this, um, I'm kind of used to just doing these little specular highlight um, dots throughout the scene, but just the ability to choose um, any given value within any given hue is it's pretty big. Okay, so adding a few little extra little specular highlights on the surface. See that right there? Looks pretty crazy when it looks like that, but this is what it looks like. You know, this is like normal viewing distance. But, you know, as you bring it closer, or whatever, as it's capturing some of the light, you, know, you can really see kind of what's going on in here. Let's take a look at with this a little bit closer up down here. Okay. Let me do a couple little refine, refine, 
refinements in terms of color application. To me, this is, it looks a little bit too busy, so I'm going to add a few streaks more of some dark brown in there. Okay. So, one of the things about this is this isn't just a A to Z process, okay? You can get to certain colors, you can add in some gel pen, you can go back and add some more tone like this back into it. You know, so you can ink, highlight, ink again, whatever. It's more of kind of a circular process in some ways, or potentially circular process. You can do it linear and just, you know, do one thing and never go back to, you know, a media that, you know, you previously had utilized earlier. But, I will use it again. Okay, see I've kind of strengthened those streaks in there a little bit. I felt that gave the it's giving a little bit more continuity to the uh, the water there. Not ha not having it quite so busy. Busy in some areas, but kind of calm in the others. And more incorporated. Actually, what's interesting is as I tap over this, some of the areas where there was um, some gel pen added I can see the gel pen more now because I've made the area in back of it a little bit, you know, darker. Okay. All right. So, a little bit better, huh? It's kind of a little bit more mellow, I would say. All right, let's see if what it did. Okay, it looks... What's interesting to me is that the gel pen marks are still intact. I didn't know if that pen was going to... Uh, kind of blur them out and spread them, but the gel pen stays on there pretty nicely, I would say. Okay, let me see now. Um, okay, I want to go for a little bit more of a bold application of highlights. All right. And we'll keep it down here in the water. Kind of shim shimmering water down here with the use of some of those G uh, Signo pen <laughs> highlights here and there. Well, it's just a little sparkle of water or sparkle of a, a reflection coming off the water, okay? So, they kind of you create this kind of this little dancing little specks of light on the water's surface when you do something like this. It, it can really potentially bring kind of a, an area that might be interesting already, but um, if it is or isn't, it kind of brings it to life or even more to life. All right, something like that can look strange at times too. Okay, if you only have that texture down in one area, so sometimes what I like to do is I like to bring that same texture in other areas, maybe in the in this case in the form of some highlights on some rocks. Okay. You see those little highlights up there, those rocks. <clears throat> to me, it makes the rocks seem a little bit more dimensional by having a highlight on some of it. Let me try something here. Okay. This is like a pale orange gel pen right here, okay? Maybe 
and stain with this color scheme. I can put a few little highlights on some of the rocks in the darker area, but instead of just going white, we can do a little bit of pale version of the colors that, that are already on them. In this case, it's kind of orange, red, okay? Which would be, this would be the lighter version of it, okay? Now, let's add a little bit more drama to this in the form of image depth, okay? Now we have these ripples going on down here. Let me get this all back into frame. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the field of view to the foreground. Now let's go ahead and utilize these uh, these trees here. I'm looking for my Versafine pad. I see if I no, nope. I have it right here. <clears throat> this pigment ink. I love these Versafine pads, but um, the scene might not dry very fast or this impression might not dry very fast, but I don't care. I think Versafine stamps out beautifully in terms of uh, details, but um, it also stamps out very thick. Um, memories black would do the same. Okay, so if you have a memories or whatever black you have, you can use it. But uh, if you have something like this, you might want to try it out sometime. It's a, certainly a different uh, kind of viscosity of ink. Okay, and I'll stamp this like down here. I'm not going for the full image. And there's no right or wrong to this, but I, I probably wouldn't stamp it clear across all of my ripples down there that, that I spent so much time to kind of detail. Okay. Now I could have stamped this out in dark brown as well, but uh, I wanted to go for a little bit more depth, and sometimes you go with something a lot darker, closer to you, okay? Things in the distance, you know, you have light reflecting off them, reflecting back at your eye, through all the suspended particles in the air, you know, so sometimes things in the more distant look a little bit lighter, okay? See what that's doing right there? Zoom in, you can see it right there. See how that really stands out against the background? So that's dark uh, brown, but this is black, and I mean, the, uh, the black is not dry, so it's a little bit darker. It'll probably dry a little bit duller, but look how, look how much depth is there. See that? It really looks like it's hovering in front of the scene, huh? So that's one of those little tricks, too. Sometimes if you have something going on, you know, in the distance. I mean, it wasn't distance, you know, too distant before, but now it looks more distant because I stamped something in the foreground. But um, if you stamp out your imagery in the scene and kind of retain the use of black solely for the foreground, then you can kind of create more depth that way. or the illusion of depth, I should say. See, I'm always kind of pressing on the, uh, the different areas of the image, not smashing it, not tilting it or something like that. You want to go with a nice flat impression, but nice and firm, okay? And I'm holding it down a little bit longer than I normally would to make an impression, just because I want to make sure that ink transfers over to the page. 
See how that really stands out down there? And here it is, and it's as a whole, okay? Do I want another one here? Let's go right here. Just the tip of it, okay? It's one of the beauties of uh, scenic stamping, okay? You can really utilize the same image over and over again. Here it is in the kind of the background or midground or whatever. Here it is in the foreground. And as you look at these, you know, you don't say, oh, okay, there's that same tree stamped one, two, three times, you know. You just look at it and, you know, to me, I would just see it as different trees. It doesn't even, I don't know, it doesn't scream, you know, to the uh, viewer or those that don't know, you know, same tree. Okay, but you can see what this does here, the VersaFine. You can see how that really stands out down there. See how that really stands out against that. And when you stamp out something like that, even though it's covering up some of the water, I think it makes that water look a little bit more, whatever it is, shimmering and light and uh, colorful. By putting something else kind of um, in contrast to it, so, you know, dark and near, and colorless, you know, makes that area down here kind of even more alive and sparkly and whatnot, okay? So you can see it in there. See, and there's that shimmer. <laughs> and that's a whole different dimension, you know, to it, like that. This, I think, looks good, all right? But just, you know, that extra little touch in there makes it really shimmery. Now, I'm really holding that up to the light like that, but if I just looked at it regular, you know, like this, and I, you know, tilt it a little bit, you know, certain areas tend to pop out a little bit more so the more I tilt this, okay? So let me see if we can... It's hard to capture it on video here, but... Uh... gel pen work in there, but obscure and not obscure, right? So I like that. It's not exactly like disappearing ink or something like that, but you get that extra little thing in there, which is kind of a bonus for us as a viewer, and um, it's one of those subtle little hidden um, details within the scene that someone can enjoy. All right, anyway, kind of it. That's experiment number, what, two using the uh, gel pens. In this case, it was mostly the glitter gel pens. I didn't really even use two of the. Uh, I don't think I used a metallic in here. I'm not going to right here because, I mean, I could put some metallic marks down here, but um, I don't know. It's kind of fun. There's also some other choices. You know, that maybe I can experiment around with um, in terms of uh, um, maybe different hues in here. Maybe putting streaks of some kind of bizarre purple or something like that might be kind of interesting. Or magenta of that sort. But otherwise, I think I'll stop right there. I'm kind of learning as I go. So I'm learning a little bit more about these pens and... Uh, you know, what they can do on certain surfaces or for certain looks. So I think that looks really good for the water. And uh, it's just kind of that extra little touch that I've been thinking about for really quite a long time in terms of what I'd like to be able to apply in a given scene. So um, things like that really uh, kind of add into, uh, add to my fun in terms of uh, kind of the details that I like to uh, finish the scene off with. So anyway, uh, shimmering waters, I don't know.
That's kind of a stupid uh, name. I'll figure something out. Maybe. Okay. Anyways, if you've watched this video to the end, thanks for hanging in there and watching. And I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I'd have to say I certainly in, am enjoying uh, playing around with these pens. I want maybe I want to do a, some kind of night sky next time where I do you know different stars in the sky. Maybe actually like a little instead of a little dot. Maybe actually doing some stars or doing something with a little comet. You know something kind of playful and whimsical using all these different pens here. So something like that. More experiments to come and uh, a lot more fun. Uh, in the process. So thanks again for watching.